This is Stephen Sloan. The date is September the 15th, 2015. We're in the home of uh, Mrs. Baisa Helbich, and this is an interview with the Texas Holocaust and Genocide Commission's Survivor of Genocide Project. Uh, we're at her home in Burleson, Texas. Thank you, Baisa, for sitting down with us today and okay. visiting with us. And we've already been welcomed well with traditional coffee, and it's it's we're, we're feeling very much at home. I'd like to start out as we, there's a lot of ground of course we're going to cover, but I'd like to start out with some of your earliest memories and some of your family experiences there in Bosnia, if you can, if you can give us some of that. <laughs> uh, it's hard to, re I mean it's not hard to remember and I don't know how to start, but uh, yeah, I was, uh, uh, the, when war started, I was uh, stayed in a city of Banja Luka, which is uh, most the people is a Serbian, and um, so the starting war, and we have. Can I stop you just a second? Yeah. I want to go back before the war started. Uh, before. I want. I want to. I want to. Some of, tell me a little bit about your family. Mm -hmm. Some of your early experiences growing up. You told me a little bit before we started recording. Mm -hmm. about where you lived and then mm -hmm. moving to live with a family mm -hmm. member. If you could mm -hmm. tell me a little bit more about that, that would be great. Let's begin there. Uh, before war? Mm -hmm. I mean, about, I don't know, you confuse me now. <laughs> well, I just want to know a little bit more about uh, your family, uh -huh. uh, okay. your father, your mother, uh, what they did, mm -hmm. uh, what life was like, where you lived, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Yeah. So. Um, uh, my mother and my father, they have five kids. I'm the youngest one. So think about how the old. <laughs> <laughs> then um, we have a so, so good life. My father uh, used to work uh, with a company, constructions, constructions company. Uh, my mother stayed home, <clears throat> take care of us. And uh, so we have you know, we wasn't rich, but we have a very good life. We have, of course, you know, food every day and uh, whatever we need for school or choice and before that and, you know, but uh, uh, my father, uh, after work, he will work another job and to make sure we have everything. And in other words, I mean, I have a so good life. Especially my aunt and uncle, they uh, both of them working. They make very good money. They take care of me. I have everything, whatever I asking for. <laughs> and um, so, uh, life was great. And the but the biggest thing what we have, we have a freedom. And I know I was born uh, and raised with communist. Yes. And. Uh, I mean, these days when you think about, especially in this country, <laughs> I don't want to talk much about that, but we have a good life. Mm -hmm. We have President Tito at that time. You know, I was born when he was a president, he was in life. And he gave us a freedom. You want to go to church, you want to go to mosque, because uh, most popular uh, uh, religion in Bosnia is a Muslim, Catholic, and Serb. You can go to mosque, you can go to Catholic church, Serbian church, whatever you want to go. You want to go to be a communist, uh, you can be a communist, but you cannot go to church. You have to keep that separate. And of course, you know, that time I don't understand if you want a nice college and good job, you must be communist, mm -hmm. you know. But we have a freedom. We like, um, you go in a creation, a Croatia in a, a to beach, you can sleep all night outside. Just dog will come around you and looking you. Nobody else. You can sleep. Doesn't matter. My door open. My grandma never locked door. My my mother she never locked door. We just mm. you know, like yeah, barely the barely you can hear somebody kill somebody or something happen. Mm -hmm. That's before a war. Yeah. Another war, of and course, is yes, and um, after I finished my school, I got married. Then <coughs> I have my son, and I have Janana, and uh, 
we have a job, both of us. Mm-hmm. What sort of work were you doing then? Uh, <coughs> I work with um, you right then, Eric. I work with a company. Um, we make, uh, I don't know how to translate, but we make the toilet papers, uh, Kleenex, and tissues and stuff like that. Okay. That's a huge company. Uh, then beginning of the war, they give us, uh, uh, they, I mean, a nice way fired everybody who is not Serb. Mm-hmm. And plus my life, that time, in the 90, I have Janana, and uh, 1992, I got divorced. Mm-hmm. I mean, beginning of the war, 1991, I already left from my house, separate with my husband. So my problem started there. I don't need a war to make wars. Sure. I have um, custody of Janana. She was a little baby, and uh, my ex-husband, uh, her father, have a custody of our son. So, and I have right visitation from our court to s- see him every uh, second week, weekend. Then, when war start, you know, I have a problem. You don't want to give me, but you know, somehow he did to see him on the time. But when war started, I can't because he left from Bosnia. I mean, I help him, yeah. you know, yeah. so. So your daughter, Janana, who's with us, by the way, mm-hmm. uh, was born in 1990, right? 1990, okay. yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, so you, you were still working during that period when you got a divorce, so you're supporting the family on the one, just your income? Yeah. Okay, yeah. just your income. Yeah. Um, then I take, I'm sorry, then I take Janana because in our country, uh, which is <laughs> what is good, even now, uh, the pregnant woman, they're going uh, before uh, have a baby, they're going one year maternity leave with full pay. Mm-hmm. So I, I um, have Janana, then, uh, then I got divorced, she was I think nine months old. And I have a paid, and I have to back to work. I barely back to work after one year. And uh, I take Janana to my mother and father in Zenza, which is a city like four hours drive away from Banja Luka because I don't have a babysitter, my aunt and my uncle working. And war start, yeah. and I cannot go there, and I don't see Janana for three years and a half. Yeah. Talk about yeah, that's yeah. really hard. So yeah, um, that's why how she left in different city mm-hmm. about my my work because yeah. mm-hmm. the situation in Bosnia. I know in the 1980s it started. Did you experience it getting a little harder after Tito? Oh yeah, yeah. Can you talk uh, a little bit? Oh about yeah, that? sure. Yeah. After Tito died, um, I I even remember the day me and my sister sitting outside and we have a bench, and me and my sister always sing. And we sing outside, and my mother came and say, shh, shh, come on in the house, come in the house. And we're like, what's wrong? Then the neighbor says, oh, Tito died, Tito died. We have a game going on, soccer, and they uh, stop that game and say, Tito died. And my mother, she was, uh, she was in a world war two, and she's always active about that stuff in politics and she's like it's going to be a very bad everybody's scared to death what's going to happen tomorrow mm-hmm. and we have reason to scared and maybe after seven days ten days we start like we cannot find to buy um, coffee nowhere mm-hmm. detergent uh, oil uh, the oil the, uh, for yes no 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 no, no. Oh. Yeah, the regular oil for a cooking, mm-hmm. cooking oil, cooking oil. Mm-hmm. sugar, uh, and that's like a, the what we really need for life, you mm-hmm. know, the basic and soap and stuff like that. Then come one store and the hundreds and hundreds of people come and start to, you know, to go in the store and they like sell you like only one kilogram sugar or something per person, but it, it is... It's many people came in, and that's the first problem starting. Mm-hmm. Then, uh, you know, step by step, step by step, 
we want to be Democrats, we don't want to be communists anymore. Mm -hmm. And um, so they try like, oh, we want to be like, uh, like here, or different countries. Then you can hear here and there, oh, you Muslim, you cannot do that and start to losing jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, whatever, uh, like, I'm, I was in Banja Luka and they say, oh, just go, we don't have enough work, like laid off. Mm -hmm. yeah. Laid off, but never come back. Yeah, so you started to feel a difference. Oh, oh already, yes, before. after Tito died, after, you know, starting slowly, slowly to have a many, many different problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that move toward independence is also along with that was this feeling yes, or this growing exactly. feeling of mm -hmm. difference. Mm -hmm. uh, you said it, it, it happened in work, you know, you would get work or you wouldn't get work if you were Muslim. Were there other ways in which you began to kind of experience or see it? I don't understand. The difference. Uh, maybe things that you could get uh, as a serb that you couldn't get Oh yeah, yeah, a lot of things. Like I say, uh, you know, because I, I live in Banja Luka. In Zenz is different story versus my parents. Mm -hmm. But in Banja Luka, like uh, starting slowly, like you cannot even say your name because if in Bosnia, if I say my name, you already knows what religion I am. And uh, so you are afraid to say your name. You know, and uh, like if you're going to store, you want to buy coffee, you want to buy that sugar, that oil, whatever is a be short for, and you know, because if you go to store, they don't know you. But if you go to like a little store in your neighborhood, and they know see you, well, oh, we don't have any, and things like that. You know, the little things starting, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and um, and especially with the job. I mean, if you lose the job, what else? And you cannot find nowhere else. Doesn't matter what you try to apply for and anything, and or if you go to apply for any help or you go to doctor, mm -hmm. make sure your doctor is a Catholic or Muslim is not Serb because it's gonna make worse. Mm -hmm. Even the doctors yeah. sometimes. Well, I mean, what is the effect that that has on the Muslim community, I mean, how does it draw you together or coming together to try to fight it or how did that affect the community, the Muslim community? You mean before a war? Before the war. How much I remember because it's very different like if you leave uh, that time like it's a big deal what city you live. Yeah. I live in Banja Luka, which is the big city. Yes. Yeah. And we don't know much each other. Like in a little city, everybody knows everybody. And uh, uh, I try, I was busy all the time. And I was raised, uh, I was raised like, doesn't matter what religion you are, that everybody's same. And I, to the last day, I treat the people like that. Mm -hmm. I have a many, many friends, uh, Serbs, and I treat them to the last day. I don't know much. You know what I mean? Even be, uh, uh, barely we're starting, and I tell the people on the flea market I work to make some money, and I didn't know everybody Serbs. But the Catholic and Serbs have the same names. It's hard. It's not every, but it's hard for me to tell mm -hmm. by your names who you are because I wasn't raised that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a friend from different cities. She called me. She's like, oh, Serbs is every night, you know, like um, attacked us. And, so. and I can't and tell that people. Like, Serbs attack them. Oh, my goodness, blah, blah, blah. And then, think about mm -hmm. how they like oh Muslims doing that I'm like why are they saying that mm -hmm. you know because I wasn't raised so that's I don't know much about that I, I never go to uh, to the mosque or to like the scoop about just Muslim people or just Catholic or just Serbs mm -hmm. or you know yeah and 
So yeah, so you can move in amongst a lot of different people. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So um, when did you lose your job? When did when did you get laid off at your job? Was it ninety one? I think yeah, nineteen ninety one. Nineteen ninety one. Um, and so this is around the same time as you said you didn't need everything else yeah. that's coming because mm -hmm. you know independence comes that year the war starts immediately after mm -hmm. that so mm -hmm. I'd, I'd like to hear your perspective on that period if you would just independence coming and the war starting and that sort of thing yeah like I say I was there with my aunt and uncle and I take Janana to my parents and I'm back to work then they say laid off you don't have work mm -hmm. then in our country uh, like the used to go everybody uh, the male going to army mm -hmm. it's not paid like here just you know they must go and uh, after they finished and uh, a long time ago they go three years then two years then my brothers go for I think 15 months then they cut to the year and stuff like that but when they go home they give them uh, to be in the reserve mm -hmm. so I remember they call everybody to the reserve the, they have a practice like you know on the field but for days and everybody left the men's mm -hmm. And so your, I, your older brothers are in the No, they, they in Zenza. Okay, I'm only so, one. Okay. I am the only one in Banyaluca and my sister, she lives in Banyaluca. And I my see. aunt and uncle, my father, my two brothers, they... But uh, Janana's father and all men went to, to that uh, practice uh, to the reserve. And uh, I try, because I have no job and I have to feed the kids and I have to travel. I or every weekend to see Janana to my parents but like I say early I'm always strong woman and I'm always like oh I can do I don't care what I'm doing I don't want stealing and stuff like that but do some jobs I will do something to make money and uh, so I start to work in the flea markets selling the vegetables the the friend he's a Catholic he used to work with me and Janana's father he's the one who's selling with mother he asked me to work for him then I'm lo work a little bigger I'm like oh I can do for myself then I start doing that and I make pretty good money and I love that job I would love to do that job now trust me <laughs> I love it always with the people and you know I started to work there and uh, this is a little little flea market like the you know I have a little field in my aunt uh, building where she have apartment so close and I work there and but you can see the man's coming always in and out from reserve but when Serbs come uh, you know they like always rude to us and you know asking for free or just take stuff for free and stuff like that mm -hmm. and uh, I went to see Janana all the time whatever I have a chance I go like I say like four hours a drive I, I went to with a train all the time saw her and um, I my aunt also in Bosnia if you are sick and your doctor tell you you have to stay at home seven ten days whatever but with full pay and she got sick and she don't have to go work and she's like I'm going to see Janana I say okay kiss her for me and tell her I'm coming Sunday I mean she she was a baby then she went and me and my uncle stayed and I work so she go like today and next day you cannot go anymore she cannot come back. I cannot go see Janana day by day, day by day, three years and a half. <laughs> yeah, and uh, what I tried to tell you. But yeah, uh, I work there, then slowly uh, they tell them to go home. The reserves, pretty much Muslim, and the Serb state, they have guns, The what's they call the big guns? The, the big guns, you know, with the military we are. Mm -hmm and <laughs> that started to be yeah. very hard life in that city yeah well you know we 
we come from a very different place and we don't necessarily understand but I'd like for you to share what life was like in that sort of circumstance I mean I know this goes on for three years as you're living mm -hmm. um, in Banya Luka so yeah <laughs> you don't you don't want to I we I wish nobody ever have that experience what kind of life we have like I stayed, I stayed there and working and uh, but my problem is because I told you already I don't race like that and I don't know who is who and all that people knows me and they know I'm Muslim and they say uh, you know when the the guys come with the with the guns and they come to me so often then I see I have to go from there mm -hmm. so I go out to another flea market to work and my sister her husband they lived like a three kilometers, like maybe two miles away. Mm -hmm. And all that means, that's where I, uh, when Janana's father from, the same place where my sister, we, uh, me and my sister was neighbors. All that means, they cannot, they hide. They hide every, does, I don't even know where her father was hide. I never saw him during the war. Everybody hide because they come, they kill with no reason, because you're Muslim, you're Catholic. Because one call place called Verbanya, it's a Muslim people. You're going like from the Banya Luka city, you're coming out just from the city. And this way, it's a Verbanya, which is Muslim. This way is the Belyatsa, which is Catholic. And they go always there and kill you or just, or just uh, beat you with no reason. You know, what's your name and call the uh, that bad names we have. They call us Bali. I cannot translate, like maybe you hear about the Serbs, the Chetniks, mm -hmm. or Catholics, Ustashe. So that's a bad names. Like here, if if you call the black men, mm -hmm. whatever, yeah. the black people, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. And um, so uh, my sister, she's scared. And uh, I went to work and I make money and I bring the food for my sister and her family, her husband, her daughter, ma uh, mother and father-in-law, the sister-in-law, for Janana's father, for her uh, grandma and grandpa, everybody. I take for everybody food because I'm only one who, who don't afraid. I'm going, I don't even thinking, you know, like, they kill me, who cares? What I gonna do? Somebody needs to go to make money. Nobody's working already. And the guys have to hide because they also, what they do, uh, they did that to my uncle. He's going to the elevator and they grab him and take him. And many, many, many uh, Catholic and Muslim people, they take to the, the, the front. Um, I need Janana's help. Front line of the war. Front line of the war, yeah. yes. Uh, to uh, dig the... Tr trenches? Yeah. That's where they take them, mm -hmm. and because of course, even if if the Muslim or Catholic people, whoever they are first, they're gonna kill them, mm -hmm. you know, and say, oh, go do that for us. We can't, yeah. and and they take. That's why men, every man hide, and you know. I never forget when they come one night and uh, they have, uh, they come like ten, fifteen, with a big. Uh, beers and the guns and I was with my sister and they come and they just looking for mans and if they catch the mans they just take or beat to death or uh, what I really remember they beat to death uh, my sister father-in-law it's an older man yeah. what they gonna do with him and they beat him so bad and uh, they doing stuff very very and or if they see the young nice looking girls and you know they raped uh janana's um un uh, father's uncle and his wife and the 15 years old daughter and the grandma uh they uh th because grandma come to the door her father grandma 
and she's like, oh, "What you you cannot go in?" And they push her, and uh, her, you know, like after after that she died, like maybe a few days ago. But uh, they beat to death uncle, and they raped the fifteen years old and the mother, but making him to watching what they're doing. So it's. A, and every morning they say oh they kill this one they kill this one and you know that people mm -hmm. you know yeah so. but you know for you some of these serbs you had been i mean you had relationships you had been friends you had known them in yes the city. so i mean what i have yeah. uh like i say i moved to another flea market yeah. then one day the police officer come to me and say and taking the eggs back uh, the like one i don't know how to say like uh, yeah in eggs and say can you sell can you buy from me these eggs very cheap and i can sell them for more money and he told me i am from omarska which is a wars what can be during the war where they put the people from different city from Predor mm -hmm. they make like a yeah. camp okay. and uh, but he say he came from Zagreb from Croatia he used to work over there mm -hmm. and he came here and he's got a wife and seven months old baby but they don't have a they don't have a salary for for many months, he must buy milk for his baby. He's a Serb. I say, no, I'm not going to buy for you. I'm going to sell for you for the real price and you can have more money. Are you really going to do that? Of course, why not? Then I say, bring me more because he go to that village where he from and his parents and uh, uh, mother-in-law and father-in-law have eggs and so. Then he come to me and I give him money then again and we start to be a friend. He bring a wife and son and we meet and you know. Then we start to be very good friends. And um, so I tell her, why you don't work with me? You don't work, you don't have to work for me. You can be next to me and I will tell you how you're going to sell, where you're going to buy, everything about this job and she start. And they help me a lot. Mm. They help me a lot. And uh, even if if I don't have them, I will never be able to go out from Banja Luka. Mm. When times come, they take me. I see. Yeah. Yeah. So that so. relationship becomes very. Important. Oh yeah, very, very, and which is which is very sad. That boy, when he was fifteen, he uh, sit with a friend who just have a driver's license, and they hit the tree, and he got killed. Oh no. They have only one son. Oh, yeah. yeah. But yeah, and that friend. I came uh, to my sister, to Verbanya, because he, wo he uh, worked in that area. He, uh, my sister tell me, oh, can you do anything? They took my husband. And I find him and say, oh, do something. They take him, you know, I'm crying. He's like, don't worry. And he find them. They take him, the, b the behind the building, they want to, you know do whatever they want to do and he take him back home many times he did help mm. then one time I'm with him no I coming to my sister and her husband crying and I say what's wrong and he say my sister have a tonsils very bad sometimes mm -hmm. she must have a penicillin and she got very sick so she went to the uh, clinic and the doctor was a Muslim, and she tell her, because we can come to the ambulance, uh, come to the clinic. I will give it to you. Don't go to. She's supposed to go to emergency room, which is, who knows, probably serves for sure. She came, and when she giving her penicillin, she's like, oh, something is wrong. Because we have from a uh, uh, that organization bring the a lot of medicine and stuff, probably old or something. And my sister got a psycho shock mm -hmm. of that penicillin. And they take her to emergency room. And I find that friend Sveto, I say, 
please, my sister going to die. And we sit in a car, he drive like a maniac. I think mm -hmm. we're gonna die that day. And we go over there and he asking, uh, you know, and they say, oh, they just got her. Who, and they asking, who is she? He's like, she's my wife. And he bring the wife's IED for uh, uh, insurance, you know, mm -hmm. the things like that. And they help her. Oh, wow. If not, yeah, knows what's gonna yeah. happen with her. So they help me a lot, you know. I mean, I don't say every service is same. Sure. But they they did a lot of good mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, it, it's to to see um, and experience the kindness of mm -hmm. people who are persecuting you. I mean, yeah. Because I have in my family. Nobody killed very close family. Mm -hmm. It's many neighbors and you know, but no like brother or sister or something. But I, I lost many friends and uh, uh, like Srebrenica, 7,000 people one day. Yeah. Uh, I have, uh, uh, with the dead people we went to City Huge where I was born, they, they have a big uh, sales day on the every Saturday and we went to sell uh, that vegetables and mm -hmm. stuff and I saw my first neighbor and I'm like hey lovely I'm so happy to saw him he's like what are you doing here you don't afraid to come here I'm like oh my goodness you know, he served. But he was raised, he eat more bread in my house mm -hmm. than myself, you know. My mother called him son, like my brothers. And that friend, he is in the uniform, so the police say, do you have any problem? He's like, no, but why she's here? He's like, that's not your problem. You can have a problem, you know, and I'm like, oh, please go, please go, please go, please go, you know, like, mm -hmm. I, you know, if he bring more people and mm -hmm. so, yeah, that's what I say, my, from my childhood, the best friend of my brothers and, and raised with us, want to kill me. Mm -hmm. So, you, you don't know for them who is good, who is not. Maybe mm -hmm. even these days, today, we have many Serbs come here. We have here time to time um, like a Bosnian music concert and stuff. They will never come. They go, they have Orthodox church here and they bring their music and only Serbs go. Mm -hmm. Still. Still. Yeah. They don't want to come. Yeah. Even here like and uh, Starbucks on the Trey Lake over mm -hmm. there uh, they call Serbian community. The our guys, the young people, young, they came little as Janana and young people, mm. but they call them Serbian community because they don't want to be very close friends with another yeah. kid. Did, so did you continue to work in the market throughout the war? Yeah. 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 Uh, thanks to these friends. Yeah. 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 I did. But at the end, uh, because I have to, I have to feed my family. Mm -hmm. Then uh, one day the soldier came and he's got the gun pulled on me and he's like, use the bad words. Uh, what are you doing here? I say no. and. The, the girl who worked next to me say, hey, I'm so-and-so, here you go, my ID. No, I need from that girl. He wants to kill me. Thanks God. I mean, <laughs> maybe I'm bad, but some old guy come to him and he take him behind the building. What he did, I don't know. And I run and I never go back. And after that, they helped me to go out. Because I take out my sister and her family 5,000 Deutschmark in that time I put together and the cost for my sister and her family. Then 5,000 Deutschmark for my ex-husband and my son. I give them because I sold some furniture from our house and stuff like that. 
and I don't have the time I have to go. I have no money. I cannot work. I cannot go. What I gonna do? And I don't have no business to do in that city because everybody left. Yeah. And I, but no way to go. So they help me. Well, b before we get to that, because I want to ask that question. So sure. you're in the middle of a war and you're working selling fruits and vegetables, but it's in the middle of a war. So getting food to eat, surviving, I mean, the conditions had to be getting worse and worse, just wartime conditions. It's hard to explain. Yeah. Um, I always tell my son it's hard to explain. Even when we talk between me and my husband, it's hard to explain. It's different city, different situation. In Banja Luka, we don't have technically war. Okay. It's not like, um, you know, war. Yeah. Just hard for Muslim people and Catholic people sure. because all Serbs. But it's not a war. Not open fighting. No open fighting. Yeah. But they kill if they, you know, middle on the street, they will kill you. They don't care. Mm -hmm. um, but from Serbia, they bring to Banja Luka with uh, uh, big trucks, food like uh, vegetables, banana, everything. We have everything. And I, when I selling, they, I didn't go by my name. I, I wasn't by Isa, I was Bosa. You know, mm -hmm. and that's why that guy come and wants to kill me because he knows who I am. Somebody told him, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, but because I have this couple helping me, especially his police. But that's that's how how going in my country. Like you have somebody who help you something and things like that. Then in the city where is my father, where is Janana was, they have no food at all. They so hungry, they cannot survive. Then the Serb says, we can send 360 packaged food for 360 Serbs to, um, what's it called? To exchange. Exchange. Mm -hmm. I pack 10 packets, like mandarin, uh, the, like uh, oil, flour, sugar, and stuff like that, some candy for Janana, and some clothes for her, and stuff like that, and it was so hard to get in to give them, but thanks to my friend again, I got give that 10 of that 10 come for, but wow, it's celebration, mm -hmm. when my family have that, because they have nothing to eat, the people dying, how hungry they are, because close this city is closed from nowhere cannot come food yeah in Banja Luka you have Serbs coming in oh from Serbia yeah and so more food oh yeah we yeah. have a lot of food mm -hmm. of course if you have money if you serve the Muslim people and Catholic they don't have because they uh, the only the the female going to selling the milk from a village eggs and stuff like that but they come the soldiers come and just like oh and throw all your milk, everything, or just use the gun and, you know, so you're lucky one if you sell something. It's amazing to me that you kept going out, and you kept going out and working. I have to, to help my family, to, because if I don't do that, who's going to do it? My sister's scared to death, plus she got sick. And the men cannot go outside, they hide. And uh, so, but like I say, I don't think in that time. I'm like, if they kill me, so? I mean, it's gonna be one time and that's it. I have to. Most people don't view death that way. Oh, it's, no, it's no, it. I tell Melissa already how I, uh, I scared for airplane, for many, many things I scared now. <laughs> Well, was it also a way for you to cope or to deal with the situation? Was you're a hard worker, you could go and you could work. That was something you could do mm -hmm. to kind of deal with the situation. I'm afraid I don't understand the question. Well, some hid, some stayed in their home, 
But one of the ways you dealt with what was going on is you went and worked because you know how to work and you're a hard worker. It seems like to me that's the impression I get. Yeah. 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 Well, take me through. Um, you told me about uh, the soldiers coming mm -hmm. and confronting you. Take me through what happened then as far as getting you out. You said your friends helped you get out. Mm -hmm. Can you can you tell me that story? Sure. Yeah. Like I said, that soldier come, he wants to kill me. Mm -hmm. Then I run to my friend's house and I tell her, hey, uh, you know, I afraid I gotta go, time to go. And on the TV, the courage at that time say uh, the Muslim people have to be like gone from this world and you know everybody must be killed and blah 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 then the uh, a Sveto that a police officer he came from work and I tell him what happened and he say he always say don't worry I'm here that time he say you have to leave mm -hmm. because he's afraid he's afraid it's gonna kill me and my son so and I and I know I have to leave and I have to go. But before that, uh, from my house, I already lived with them because they took my uncle to, um, to that uh, front mm. line and the five soldiers came and they kicked me out. And I'm lucky one again, you know, because they don't kill me and I have to leave from my, from my apartment, my uh, uncle and aunt. And I leave and I stayed with my friends. So, and we see the time for me to go, really, they cannot, because they kill him, they kill his wife, his, his, his son, so I have to leave. But they find, they take, they let go for Muslim and Catholic people through Croatia. You have to sign. And I go over there and I put my name so, I think three, four days before mm -hmm. I go, because I have no clothes, I have nothing anymore, no money, nothing. And my friend, she's like, here you go, take whatever you want. Mm -hmm. We are pretty same size, and I grab some, you know, shirts, and because it's August. And before that, three, four days ago, my sister, uh, sister-in-law told me she's like can you come have some coffee with me I said okay because we don't have uh, electricity for three years in Banja Luka mm -hmm. no electricity at all and <laughs> we have a picture last year right we made coffee on the snow here oh, or two yeah. years ago yes. and yes. we have electricity off here in the Crowley oh, yeah. and I asked my husband I said okay how are we gonna make coffee now it's like, oh, you know, on the barbecue grill, and so, uh, you don't have it, uh, you, you were in a war. He's like, hmm. I'm like, okay. Because his uh, family in Germany for all their life, he was six years old when they, they went. Mm -hmm. So he's the lucky one. <laughs> and uh, it's like, oh, well, I say, okay, let me show you. I grab, we went to like a front door, and I grabbed some um, um, cloth, mm -hmm. piece of cloth, little oil, uh, put the, uh, that from the oven, mm -hmm. the thing, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, and, the yeah, yeah, and put in a fry pan, yeah. uh, fire, put my stuff on, and be making coffee, put in the Facebook, <laughs> and everybody, hey, come to Mars, come to, I'm like, no, this is not, I just, pictures, I yeah, <laughs> uh, that's how we make coffee, and she called me, and I, and I come, and I this person doesn't matter how much problem I have I'm always smiling and talking and you know try to pretend everything is fine with me she's like do you know anything I'm like what do you mean oh well do you know anything I say no she's like Baisa your mother passed away four days ago I'm like no she's not yeah she is because my sister is in Denmark already and I didn't see my mother for two years and a half. Anyway, it, it was, oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Because when I left last time from my city, she held Janana on the balcony 
and I crying and kissing my mother and Janana and crying and crying. She's like, what's wrong? Why are you crying? You're coming back next week. And I never saw her again. Yeah, and my mother, she did pass away. So she just had a heart attack. She she wasn't sick and she just... Stress. Stress. Because she don't know where I am. She don't know where's my sister, my two brothers uh, in the military, mm -hmm. in the war. Of course, and my my oldest brother he passed away when he twenty seven. Uh, the day, uh, the year, one year before Tito died. So how was how were they able, uh, Jana and your grandmother? How were they able to get out of Bosnia? They didn't. They never did. They stayed in the city. They stayed in the city. I will tell you a story. Okay. <laughs> they stayed in the city, and Zen's also no war, mm -hmm. but it's all Muslim people and Catholic. It's only 16 percentage of Serbs. Mm -hmm. And even that 16 percentage start in the beginning, they won the Zen. <laughs> and they <laughs> kick them out like this, you know, 16 mm -hmm. percentage only. Mm -hmm. And um, okay, so your uh, daughter says you might want to break. Um, would now be a good time? Do you want to break real quick? Yeah. Take a break? Yeah, let's begin. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. I need my coffee. <laughs> she, wanted break a long time ago. she wanted to break a long time I ago? Think so. <laughs> I smoke a lot. Well, you go go smoke. You go I smoke smoke. like pack and a half or two packs a day. <laughs> so cigarettes and coffee. Yeah, you barely. Okay, we're back recording again. I'd like to go back and ask a couple of questions sure. because John was giving me some information while we took a little break. Mm -hmm. So I understood that uh, you went to school to be a teacher, or yes. you had interest. Can you tell me about that? I don't know much to tell. That's a long time ago. <laughs> I don't want to be that. I'm anymore. a historian. That's what I do. Is a long time ago. So yeah, why, yeah. Why? Why a teacher? Why? What got you interested in going, being a teacher? Uh, it just. I want to make happy my parents. Uh, I want to be doctor. Veterinarian uh, um, for the animals. Oh, veterinarian. Veterinarian. Yeah. But uh, that time in a Sarajevo city, they have only that college, and they accept 17 students. In our country, if you have a lot of money and you know people, mm -hmm. like really, and give him like $10,000, now I give it to you, you put me in the Baylor University, and that's not happen. Then I was so upset, I don't wanna go, and uh, so my parents say, do whatever you, you know, like, they want me to go to college, so I picked because I loved the uh, language and I was so good. That's what I say. I want to write a book mm -hmm. because this is the what I got to school for. And but I never, I never worked that job. I have no chance because I finished. I got married. I find a whatever job and the war started. And here you go. Yeah. The other thing she was sharing with us is just. Um, Memories you have of other instances where neighbors were turning on neighbors or um, during the war Stories of Muslims being um, Pointed out or being um, Oppressed by friends that they used to have before the war How things got worse in those areas Were there other there are other memories that you have of that? You understand what I mean? Mm. I what do you mean? Uh, sh um, the, the question is, you know... Papriša Bosanski. Pitanje je njegovo, ovaj, da li nešto kažeš kako je to se dešalo, da su prijatelji prije rata se, onda jedni drugi okrenuli tu, u tom je smislu. Da se, ja, protiv jedni, protiv drugi, aha. Bili ste prijatelji prije rata i sad odjednom kad je rat nas to svak na svakoga. You think you know English better than me? Yes. No. Ja, yes, it is a lot of, like the people scared to the war anyway, you know. And uh, I know the the happen in our neighborhood. Like I'm Muslim, you're Muslim, and uh, I save my life. I will tell them you did wrong something, and they come to you, and I will be good and stuff like that. And also between friends, like I say, when I went to that my city, 
and the the best friend my brother's best friend and raised in our house he wants to kill me and uh, so it's a uh, the people is scared change. change also like to save their life they will do anything to another people yeah. you know because it's like it's confused yeah. you know like you don't know what you're doing and you know yeah, like smooth. just uh, Survive. Yeah. Then, yeah, that's what he say. Like uh, somebody who is nothing, who is really, um, how I explain, who is bad people before a war. They stealing. They was in the jail or they in the jail. They t let them go out. They are wars. Mm -hmm. I have a neighbors down uh, on the street. They were so bad, wild. and they wild, and they knows exactly who is who. What do you have in the house? Because they been, they visit. We we visit each other, not like here, you know. Like the the first night, that I met only one neighbor here, and that's it. Yeah. Outside, if if we in Bosnia, all these neighborhoods will be already in my house. We will drink coffee together, talking and everything. We will know everybody already. And that people who is bad, they come at night and put something, you know, on their head or send somebody you don't know to come to kill you or take all your stuff. And uh, it's a lot of like uh, uh, stealing, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Oh, they know you have a good TV, you have a good couch, and mm -hmm. they come and take it. And if you say anything, if you try to do anything, they, they, they kill. Yeah, it's, we talked a lot about the violence, but there is the stealing. Oh, a lot of stealing. I mean, even money and yeah. and pff, gold, and if you have any gold on you. And mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, they have a power. They can do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. And you don't have, you cannot go to police. And they say you are lying. They will put you in a jail and kill you. Nobody knows. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's not, it's not. Uh, our country always have a, uh, like. Um, Corruption. Yeah, but. Even these days. Mm -hmm. You know, as you were sharing your story, and you you talked about when it became time that you knew it was time to leave. Mm -hmm. What convinced you? You know, what what made you know that now was the time to get out? I better get out now. The, the number one, because I have to go, all my, like I say, my sister, my ex-husband, my son leave. Mm -hmm. What I have to waiting for. I have to find the way how to find Jinana. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I go to Red Cross and I ask them, can they help me? I tell them the situation, how Jinana in Zenza, how I can get there. And the, my son go to Croatia and they say they cannot help me. So I hear... You know, uh, the Serbs let the go people with the buses, and you have to sign, and I went to sign my name, and that's where we stop. Mm -hmm. And uh, she told me about my mom, and so I went. So when time to go, my friend gave me some her clothes and bag, and I take. So we went over there when buses leaving. It's a uh, one like uh, uh, they sell the uh, uh, cars at a weekend sometimes, um, market, flea market for cars, a big field, mm -hmm. and that's where they put everybody in buses. It's a thousand people in there. And somebody have like you that notebook and calling the names. Mm -hmm. And all buses is full, they never call my name. And my friend asked the soldier, do you call her name? He's like, no. Do you call her name? He's like, no. And and she's like, uh, do you call her name? And she, <clears throat> you know, used the bad voice and gave it to his pocket, 200 Deutschmark. Do you call his name? He's like, yes, go in. And he never asked, what is my name? They put me in a bus, the last one, they cannot close door. You know, the door like uh, that. And so, we leaving from Banja Luka. It is 
I don't know, maybe 25 to 30 miles Banja Luka Gradiška. Yeah, around. Yeah, 25, 30 miles. It's like 40 minutes, 45, mm -hmm. 50. They took us all day. It's a, I don't know how bus can have a people, but there's a hundreds of people in one bus. People dying in the bus. Mm -hmm. Everybody take the bag and kids and, and we are like this. But <laughs> the good thing that Compressed, time, like yeah, a like a sardinas. Yeah. But the good time, I mean, the good thing, and bad things and good thing, because we have to stop every mile, that some soldiers stop. Patrol. Patrol, they come. Give me, everybody, give me money, give me gold, give me what do you have. And people, I don't have nothing to hide because I don't have any money. But they put like here, put the, in, you know, fix or here or somewhere, the money, they find that in the gold. And if you have any gold on you and, and valuable stuff, mm -hmm. you know. So, like I say, every mile or two, that's the worst time in my life. And they take us one field uh, where is the, like, uh, they selling the, uh, on the weekends, mm, animals like cow horses it's and stuff yeah, yeah something yeah, yeah. it's a big field mm -hmm. and almost dark i know like uh, maybe seven eight in the summertime it's august and so we think it's end they're gonna kill us because they kill when the buses go three four five buses uh when they go from banyaluka to zenza that's why my brothers always told me because uh, somehow with uh, radio we have communications because we don't have phones, no electricity, nothing. They told me to not go because they kill the people. All four or five buses, they kill the people. So we think that's the end. Mm -hmm. And they take us there for, I don't know, three, four hours and we hear like, oh, because we need to go to Croatia and they say, Oh, the Ustashe, which they call Croatian people, says they will take Ustashe. That's mean Catholic people. Mm -hmm. But they say they don't want a Balie. Yeah. We need to kill all Balie here. And we hear what they talk about, so we, everybody's scared to death. Mm -hmm. And I remember one house like that, and they like, do you want a war? Do you want a coffee? Of course we do. You know, we're hungry, we thirsty with everything. And they selling the cup of water from the... From the you know, outside the, I I don't even know how much money they asking for, and you know, if somebody have any money, they will buy. They don't let give you the because Serbs house and stuff. Yeah, we was there for three four hours. Then finally we leave and again stopped and again. Then and they took the girls, the pearly. Thanks God, I wasn't pearly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, rape and you know if anybody say it's women's kids and old people yeah. if anybody say anything they will kill you and yeah. they kill the people the, during that convoy then finally we got there but we got to um, gosh Genesis is right I'm old what's the call that river Koya Vrbas. No, 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 no. Uh, where I go to Croatia through river. New Sava. Yeah, we come to Sava. Yeah. Yeah, na Srbac smo išli gore. Yeah, Sava river. And we they bring us to that river. The border to Croatia. Yeah. The border, yeah. but the river is. Mm -hmm. And uh, from Croatia people come with a red cross. They come with the little boats. And take like five, six people at a time. And they was, the soldier pretend to be so nice, like, have a nice time and, you know, see you. Because UN was there. Mm -hmm. So I remember, because everybody, it's come with a mother or kids or, you know, together. I'm the only one by myself. But eight months before my ex-husband left with my son and my sister, she's in Denmark already. Mm -hmm. And she told me, um, 
my ex-husband's sister, she's in Denmark, and they coming for a few days, my ex-husband and my son, to Denmark. I'm like, that's good. So I'm by myself, and like five, six people sit in that boat, and we finally got to Greece. Oh, my God. That had to take forever. You're waiting to mm. get across. Yeah. Yeah. I will well, never forget want. that yeah. in my life. The people kissing the land and mm -hmm. stuff and the the young people from uh, uh, Red Cross they come and take you back don't worry they put us in a car and taking us and then taking us one place then we come there oh my goodness it's a lot of food and drink banana beer cigarettes mm -hmm. coffee they uh the people who lives there when if they see the the little kids and babies they take them take a shower uh, diapers everything 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 they provide for us of course <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's the that's the politic anyway so we were so happy we don't even think about anything and they say everybody need to go to check in and that's how I, I mean, that time I can change my last name, but I didn't. I divorced already, Heldich. It's my, uh, Janana's father's last name. I never go back to, my uh, maid's last name is Muratagic. But I never go back to that last name because I'm like, oh, I'm going somewhere. And uh, I don't want to confuse me and Janana, different last name, and I stayed forever. Yeah. It, but I don't care. <laughs> And uh, so we come there and they checking, especially men, like if you're in the military and because that time already start uh, the Catholic fight with Muslim, Muslim fight with Serb, Serb fight with Muslim, then Muslim fight with Muslim, you know, it's at the end, you don't know who fight with who, but they checking, especially on the men and some women, of course, they went to war and to be a soldier and stuff like that. So they tell us like uh, Muslim people need to go in that and that numbers of bus. The Croatian people that and that, you know, because they don't let them go out of Croatia. They're going to stay. It. But Muslim people going to refugees camp. And I said to one, like I say, I'm by myself. And that all time, I never stopped crying. I just crying because I hear my mother passed away. Everybody ask me what's wrong. Me, I mean, with everybody wrong, we leaving, but what's especially wrong with you? I say my mother passed away. And I said, and I'm like, I hear the voice. Trust me. Tell me. Get out. Go. And I walk out from that bus. Mm -hmm. Then I walk to another one. Guess what? The first one going to different city. The, the one, what I, the second one I go, going to that uh, Shibenik, it's a island, refugee uh, camp. huh? Refugee camp. Refugee camp, but it's on an island in Shibenik. Uh, they going, where is my son? Mm -hmm. And we drive 24 hours, maybe more, I don't even know, because the war is going on be, and we have to go around. Mm -hmm. Then I remember at very late at night, we are on the one um, uh, mount, and the people say, now Croatian gonna kill us here. It's, it's you're always scared, yeah. yeah. They didn't, so we come to the uh, that place, uh, the where is boats, mm -hmm. and the guy come. Uh, he looks like you. His name is Nicola Tall. Yeah, really. He's, uh, you remind me of him. And he say, my name is Nicola. Can I have uh, uh, the names of uh, you know passengers? And he told us we going to that island which is 4,000 people already over there. That day come 400 from Banyan mm -hmm. And we go in that boat and I have my bag. Like I say, I'm crying. All that time I was crying. And I hear somebody say, Hey, Baisa, oh, you come too. Your son is here. He's going tonight to America. Mm -hmm. 
I, where I lost the bag, I don't know, I don't care. <laughs> And I'm just looking to see him. I cannot see. Then I know that guy. He say he's director of uh, guy, um, that island. And I say, do you know uh, Heldich Enver, which is Janana's father, and Heldich Emir, Elmir? They say yes. Who are you? I say I'm his mother. And they like. And later they told me he told them I was killed in a war. That's why they huh. Mother, are you ghost? <laughs> <laughs> so why did he do that? Why did he tell you? Because they don't, uh, if he leaving from the country to America, yeah. they don't gonna let him go with I not see. my signature. Yeah. But he gave me all, all the time hard time to see my son. And I come, the, somebody take me to the door and he open and I say, I'm here to see my son. And he don't let me see. I say, okay, I'm going to police. Then his sister ran after me and say, hey, don't go to police, I will bring your son. He was eight. Mm -hmm. And that night he's going to America. Mm -hmm. I think I will die because he told me what I need to do. But the process, I had to go to come to America to see. Mm. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that's a wonderful moment. And he got the um, sweater my mother made for him. At night, at 12 o'clock at night, they're leaving with little boats to Shibenik. From Shibenik, they're going to split, uh, split the call city where the airport. And I go to tell him bye, but I remember he's in, in that boat and he's doing like that, and I pass. I never forget that picture. That's what I said. Technically, I lost my son in a war. Mm -hmm. And so he told me everything what I need to do, mm -hmm. uh, the process, mm -hmm. you know. And like I said, I always crying in that camp. And uh, the Red Cross coming and they talk with every refugee to see what they gonna do with us? Are you, do you wanna go somewhere else, or you know? Do an interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I see my name. I'm four hundred something. That's gonna be for days. I'm. I was between Zenta and Phoenix, Arizona. Mm -hmm. My heart is yeah. so. Go over there to see my son. Never see Janana, or go back to see Janana. You know, and. I was maybe 90 pounds mm -hmm. and everybody, we have a restaurant mm -hmm. and go to eat and uh, so the little little building where they stayed, that Red Cross, I was sitting and crying and the guy come to me, he's locking the door and he's like, why are you crying? I couldn't, I couldn't talk and he's like, okay. Can you stop crying and tell me why you cry? Like talk with like a kid. Mm -hmm. I say, my son left to uh, to America. It's like so you will go f soon. I say, well, it's a long story. He's like, you know what? Why you didn't go eat? Because we have lunch before them. I say I couldn't eat. I never eat. I can't. He's like, okay. Can you wash your face and go to restaurant? and come to the door, ask for me, because they lock already, it's done. And I go, and after that, you eat, and after you eat, me and you will have interview, we, we will talk. His name is Eat, so I remember. And uh, it's really happened like that, and he got me, and I eat, and he talked to me, and I tell him, I say, I have door in Zenza, and I have, He's like, don't worry, you will go to America and we will send the Red Cross to bring your daughter. I was so happy. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, I stopped crying. I forgot mother death. I forgot everything, yeah. <laughs> you know. So, and, uh, but they sent me the letter. They cannot find my father's address. In a sense, I'm like, no, 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 no. That's cannot happen I have to do something I'm already strong and that restaurants you can work 
but with 5,000 people, good luck. But somehow that's me. Mm. I got the job. Mm. And uh, the salary weekly is a three and a half carton cigarettes and one kilogram coffee. <laughs> they sent for us, you know. They sent for refugee, but they never give us anything. <laughs> that, that island, it's just only that restaurant for some uh, hiking people, whatever. Mm. They built two big hotels in a nice place the refugee did for five years mm. with the refugee money. Mm. So they sold the German people. Now it's a so nice island go to visit. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And I start to work. Then we go to sell that cigarette. We go to shipping and ask them, you know, like if it's worth it, like $20, give me 10 and, you know. So, and I work, then I go to the phone because uh, we go to shipping the city with the boat, like the director give us uh, permission and give us a ticket for boat. Mm -hmm. Not to everybody, you know, he rotate the people, he give it to me and I go over there and call my aunt and my sister-in-law and my brother they are here i bring them later after i can and they told me janana was in the hospital she's and my aunt told me if you want your daughter in life you have to come she will die mm -hmm. she had very bad asthma mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. she was in the hospital she's have lice and sick and not food and mm -hmm. oh no I can, I can cry, <laughs> and they say, I mean, if you ask that 5,000 people who is Baisa, nobody knows. If you ask him, do you remember that girl cry? They know so easy. They're like, what's wrong now? They told you. No. I say, oh, no. And they so good friends, everybody with me, and they say, hey, Bosnian people, they know how to work, how to make money, how to find the places, everything together. They told me from split Croatian people going to Zenta, that time, blah, 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 blah. Explain to me, of course I need money. And everybody, we have the day, our payday, they give me cigarette, they give me coffee. Mm -hmm. Everybody, here you go, go sell. Mm -hmm. And I have like five, six hundred Deutschmark, which is enough. And so I need to go to Split, find that bus, go with them to Zenta. Um, I decide I will try to bring Janan. If somebody kill me, kill me. I, I cannot decide to go to America with no Janan. Yeah. And I'm thinking Elmer is good with father. He's in America already. He's got good life already. But she's in dangerous place and she's sick. So, two o'clock in the morning, the boat leaving to Shibenik city. They going to Norway. And I go with them. So when we come two o'clock in the morning in Shibenik, they leave with the bus, to, they going to Norway. I have to go to bus station to find the bus to go to Split. And from Split, I will find the people who are gonna take me to Zend. How I walk, and they give me uh, from that restaurant. We have uh, some food and and the uh, the little Barbie doll and the uh, little purse, and I, you know. So I take that; it's so heavy, and I am like. Then the car stop, and I'm looking, and I see the the license plate is from that city. And they asking me, do I know that and that street is a. So drunk people. And I got scared. I was 29 years old. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, I don't know. Then I see taxi and I run to taxi. You know, if you're thinking now in that situation, you, you don't think, you know, whatever you try to save your life, mm -hmm. but you may be doing more dangerous, but only yeah. the God save your life. And this is also a little funny and sad. And, and I come to taxi and it's like, oh, how I can help you? I say, oh, no, you know, I don't need to go nowhere. And I'm from that, I'm refugee from Bosnia, Muslim. I tell the truth. 
but that time it's very bad Croatian and Bosnia the fighting <laughs> is like oh and I said this guy is drunk and oh yeah he's like oh yeah you woman you know it's like you know what and I tell him what bus I'm looking for it's must it's supposed to be come six o'clock in the morning he's like you know what I'm going to split to find some customers you can go with me Oh, I don't have a money to pay you. I have some money. They, my friends give me cigarettes. I sell. You know, I tell him, oh, no, 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 no. You don't need to give me money. And I said, and he stopped at the gas, sta the gas station and he buy peanuts and Coca-Cola. <laughs> and I'm eating and drinking. Oh, the good. I don't think it, I'm safe, you know. Then oh, I need to go to a pee. But... From Shibani to Split, Jordan knows how the um, how I explained the, that rocks and the big cliffs, cliffs, yeah. and oh my goodness, yeah. it's nothing and the the sea down. And I try to ask him to stop because it's night. I can just go. I'm like, huh? Thinking, I'm so stupid. If I tell him to stop to go, excuse me, to pee, he will think. Come on. Let's go have a sex. I'm asking him. Then I'm like, oh my goodness, who's guarantee for taxi? And I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm so stupid. Mm. He talk about something I don't even know. I don't listen. I, I was so scared. But I'm like, ah, uh, uh, can't stop. Uh. So then he's like, hey, here is the bus. And he blink and blink and blink and bus the stop. He's like, Hey, I have this girl, she's blah, blah, blah. She needs you guys and go to Zenza. And they say, yeah. But before that, I meant to split and find that drivers, bus drivers, and asking them to go with them. They say, whatever you're ready, you can go with us. They say, oh, yeah, we know about that girl. And he take my bag nicely and put in a bus and give me his card and say, anything if you ever need when you're back, let me know. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm just... He's so nice guy, you know. Then I said, then the driver asked me, so whatever he asked me, I don't remember. And I'm like, you know what? Can you please stop? <laughs> He's like, why? I say, if you don't stop, I will be right here, right now. And I will tell you everything. He's like, okay. Then he stopped and I go on the side and I don't care. I mean, that time, you even don't worry about your life, you know. Mm -hmm. When I'm back, I'm like, oh, thank you so much. I feel much better. And he's like, okay, they're laughing. People, it's a full bus. They're laughing. You know, I'm like, do whatever. I don't care. I feel now good. <laughs> and so, yeah, they, we come to split. And that city, we have to wait in for like for two hours. So, uh, and I see some neighbors next door neighbors from my father and mother and they Catholic I'm like, oh gosh no they don't see me for years but if I know they knows me I mean you know I don't change much and I'm hiding behind bus whatever I go they go oh my goodness but I, I the, the guy is selling the newspaper and talk about our president Alia how bad blah 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 because that time the Catholic and Muslims going and like I say Muslim with Muslim and mm -hmm. then they come in the same bus I, all, all the time I was like this I scared to death they're gonna kill me here mm -hmm. so when I come to my father and they say no they nice if if not about them Janana will never survive mm -hmm. because the Croatia closed the center and they have some food and they always give it to Janana I don't know what's going on for three years and a half sure. in our city, in our neighborhood. I don't know anything. So what was the moment like when they recognized you or when they figured out who you were? Oh, they didn't. They didn't see me. I, oh. I hide all the time just oh, okay. when I come home. But their uh, father and next day I tell them. I see. And they're like, oh, my son, you know. I'm like, you know what? We come with the same bus. I hide from you all the time. They know, you know. I say, hey, I don't believe nobody. Yeah. Uh-uh. Nobody. Yeah. Even if it's my brother there, I don't believe it. Then I, and I come to Zenza. 
and because same thing no buses you know in the city nothing mm -hmm. and I asked the guys to uh, stop before uh, that bus station because my brother lives there and they stopped me and that it's heavy because I have flour I have some uh, food in a, in a can and you know mm -hmm. and my sister-in-law because no electricity everybody used the woods and the uh, stove with the wood and she's outside try to have a wood like this to try to take home and like Marta, Marta, because we are so mixed in the family. She is uh, her father, Serb, mother, Catholic, and she married with Muslims. So, you know, and they are here. Mm -hmm. My brother right now in Zen, in uh, Bosnia, and she's like, mm -hmm. and she passed because she just like they before talked with me, mm -hmm. and she, she thinks she's crazy, and you know. So when she come. <laughs> uh, to be a normal and you know and she's like oh I say you didn't tell me about Janana mm -hmm. she's like I don't wanna you know yeah. to make you worry but I say no you're supposed to tell me so I'm like where is this mit? Oh, he's in a war and my another brother so I'm like let's go to that uh, what's the call place where is the military the base the base yeah. yeah let's go to the base and I go over there I say please please I'm begging you I don't see my brothers for three years and a half and I'm leaving my son is in America I'm leaving too and can you bring send me my brother I will be here a few days and they say yeah we can send you Ismet but no use only one and another one they cannot reach him mm -hmm. I say at least and I saw only the brother who is here now mm -hmm. so because you you don't know where you're going, mm -hmm. what's gonna happen, you know, nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I come to my father's. So. Uh, my aunt opened door. She's always nice, dressing, and you know, have nice hair. And she is oh my goodness, hundred years old, mm -hmm. and some dress on her and so poor and so skinny I walk Janana run under the table because they tell her your mother coming and I'm looking for my mother you know and she's that's only 40 days past like she passed away mm -hmm. and I'm looking from everywhere she's coming out because whatever you see is hers you know and and Janana don't want to come to me she shy. She don't know me. And my aunt, that aunt, she's really, I mean, very sick right now. And I think she's waiting for Janana. She's begging me. And even Jordan says when we was there, she just crying and wants to see Janana. Mm -hmm. And I tell Janana just go for two weeks. We will take care of kids. Mm -hmm. And she's scared to go. Mm -hmm. I think she have that like, you know. City to city, I cannot come to her. What about continent to continent? Mm -hmm. You know, so I think Janana have also problems, mm -hmm. you know, take in her life from the, you know, when she was little. Mm -hmm. So, and somehow I got Janana and, you know, and then we have to go back. And when we go back, so I can go in Croatia because I have a refugee ID. Now, Janana told me a story about she remembers when you left the house and you had to run somewhere to do something. Can you tell yeah, me? Yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, I tried to make you short, but you know. Um, yeah, and she don't want to be with me. Then somehow uh, my aunt make her to spend first night with me on the bed and you know, things. Because I bring her some stuff and uh, even today she's mad at me because that Barbie doll I bring for Janana, I give it to my uh, niece because I'm thinking Janana going with me, I will find her another one and this one poor girl. And I tell her no long time ago, she's jealous and she's still mad at me about that. <laughs> uh, and uh, so my another aunt came and we want to visit her door. But I tell Janana stayed with my aunt, I'm right back, and she starts crying. 
and holding me. No, 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 because she's afraid I will leave again. And uh, because, you know, she always tell my aunt, everybody have a young mom. I have you, you're so old. Mm -hmm. My aunt that time maybe 50 years old, 55, something like that. So on the way back to Croatia, I can go in because I have a refugee ID. Mm -hmm. But Janana, she cannot go in. She is like, uh, like here, the like from Mexico people come. A legal immigrant. A legal immigrant. Yeah. That's what she yeah. is. And uh, that driver told me, what we're going to do, we're going to find the lady who is a Catholic who is from Croatia and ask the lady to she pretend that's her child. Nobody ask question. If Janana sit with me, they will ask for her, her ID. Oh, no, she is like her son now. And I'm like, Janana, sit with this lady, and that lady is so nice. She give her apple, she give her makeup, mm -hmm. and she loved the time. And she give her makeup and stuff, and when they came, and they just do to Janana like this, and you know, I'm like, oh, thanks God. So the minute we uh, try to go again, the police, regular police stop. It was just bring Janana back to that lady. <laughs> But before I go to Zenica, I make interview already with an American officer uh -huh. in a split. And I put Janana in the paper. But I cannot tell them I will go. So if I tell them I will go to Bosnia, they will don't let me come to America. Because how you left from your country, you go to your country, you know, I do that stuff like whatever happened. So I tell them, the American Red Cross, uh, I mean, the International Red Cross will bring Janana, but they didn't, they, and they never will. Yeah. Then I went. So, and he's got everything about Janana, he must, he told me. Uh, then when I went to that interview and he asked me why you left from Banya Luka, I said, because I'm Muslim. He's like, that's it, that's it. That's only reason, I mean, you know. And I was crying, I tell about my son, and he's like, oh, don't worry, don't cry, Arizona is beautiful, you're going to Arizona, and you very soon you will see your son. And I always think I'm going to Arizona. So when we came to Croatia, and we stop in a split again, we have a 30 minutes break, and we're going to the Shibenik, like one hour drive, then from Shibenik we're going with a, that uh, boat to island and I'm like let's go Janana see very quick when the uh, American officer will be leaving because they come every three four five months but already uh, you know like uh, I think uh, September October already cold we are in tent she got asthma she's sick mm -hmm. you know raining and when we sleep if it's raining we have a like a foil mm -hmm. and put the foil and in the morning the first thing you know that's what you have to do and uh, so when i go there they say today is last day he's leaving he's here to four o'clock you can see him now but i have to go back to that uh bus station to get my bag because janana's clothes mm -hmm. And I run, and she wants the ice cream, and I don't have a dime in my pocket. And I just grab her, because I don't have time to explain. I cannot. Do. Then we go there, but my aunt asked me to take picture me and Janana and leave to her because she thinks she never gonna see us again, and we think same thing. I mean, you know what you gonna think that time. And I have that picture, and he asked me. Yeah, they want me to because I take a picture like for a passport or something and but that place is closed and he's leaving four o'clock that's it and maybe for three four five months some officer will come back but I that's mean I gonna stay it maybe five six more months in Croatia and that cold mm. in a tent and he's so nice guy and uh, he don't even have a translator. He's like, 
do you know any English? I say, yes, I know little. That's good, that's good. And he's like, do you have any picture, you and Janana? And I know she's your daughter. Yes. I take one because I want to send to my sister in Denmark. And that's it. Mm -hmm. And he say, go have a physical, because you must have a physical. He give us money to spend night in the split, to have a dinner. Mm. Yeah. I'm always, even now, if somebody try, if I, if I don't have, when I was here, like I say, my first year of work anymore, I am able to work. And you give me money for food? I, I just start crying. I, I feel so bad, you know? Yeah, and I buy her ice cream first. <laughs> she wants the ice cream. And we have that physical, and uh, I know they check us, and I say, she just come from hospital, he's got asthma, he's like, no, she's fine. You have so bad bronchitis. Mm. Me? Okay, whatever. I don't even think about myself. I have a 90 pounds. I have that picture somewhere. And my sister, she uh, passed out when she saw that picture, how skinny I was mm. and how bad I, I was looking that time. Anyway, and we spend the night and tomorrow, because if, if he don't, he knows that. If we don't ask, I will never ask for money, you know, even if I have to stay in a park that night, but he knows. Mm. He always give to people. And uh, because we will stay in a park or outside, all night to waiting to another bus or you know to go to that boat because boat going just only one time to the um, that island and back that's it yeah. and we back and I bring Janana and everybody my friends is happy yeah you bring her you know <laughs> and they make her ID because that director and everybody knows where I left Sure. Everybody on my side, because I always try to make a friends everywhere, to be friendly, helping people the way when I can help and stuff like that. Then I bring Janana, then I cannot work. Mm. She's Nobody wants to watch her. She's like her son. <laughs> 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 yeah. And so she's like, I'm hungry. and But we have a, a breakfast, lunch and dinner. I mean, the food is, uh, but that time, oh yeah, we <laughs> was eating. But they give us uh, bread, the one French bread. They're supposed to be on the four, for poor people. They give for six people. And I always say mine and uh, little things like a um, gel and a butter or something for breakfast. I always save that. I never eat to have when Janana is hungry between, you know. So... Then I have a paper December 5th, I'm leaving to America. Now, Janana told me uh, a story about at one point you were sharing a tent with a Serbi Serbian in the, in the refugee camp. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me that story? Yeah, we have, when we came there, they told you what, what you're going to, uh, what tent, and... Uh, so they sent me to that because I'm by myself. Mm -hmm. And here you go. I have a Serbs again. I'm like, oh no, why? <laughs> and you couldn't sleep, you're scared. You, like I say, the people's nice and good, but you don't believe anybody. Mm -hmm. Brother to brother don't believe because uh, between, at the end, between Muslim and Muslim, the one brother here, one brother here, they killing each other mm -hmm. so and it, it, it was uh, that that Croatia I see uh, the boat came big boat with from everywhere from the world the people sent us help mm -hmm. with the clothes and everything mm -hmm. food and a lot of stuff we never see anything. You just see the little boats come, same night, taking. But only the, like the used stuff, they bring to us and like, oh, if you need the clothes, here you go. Mm -hmm. And I remember my clothes, what I bring to America. Mm -hmm. 
you know, but I don't care. At least I'm not cold and, you know, and I have, I lost all my teeth over there. It was cold, tanned, and I have infection and I'm just pulling out. I come with only with one teeth here, 29 years old. Mm. Yeah. So you get on a plane in December 1995, right? December 5th, yeah. 1995, but I must smoke one cigarette before I tell you that story, <laughs> if you don't mind. All right. <laughs> Roll it. Okay, we left off. We were talking, you were going to tell me about the uh, trip in December 1995. Yeah, 95. Uh, before I go that, sure. I forgot you finished the story about taxi driver. See, yes. When we back to Croatia and... I went to that camp, um, refugee camp, yeah, in Ireland, and everybody around me, we have a coffee, of course, cigarettes and everything, and they say how it was your trip, and I telling them story, and I tell them uh, the story about the, you know, that the taxi driver. But that time, the girl from Bosnia, she started dating with police officer who work in that island, he from Shibanik. He's like, what's his name? I'm like, oh, I have a card. He's like, ha, 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 ha. He starts laughing. You are so lucky, girl. You have no idea how lucky you are. You tell them everything, like, you refugee, you the young girl, you dead. I'm like, then why am I lucky? Because he's a gay. <laughs> I'm like, thanks, God. <laughs> <laughs> He's like somebody will take you and take to taxi to yeah. one hour drive just because you were a refugee? Come on. <laughs> oh my god, that's good. <laughs> yeah, then I see the my name and Janana's name on that restaurant. They always put the, you know, and they say December 5th, um, we have airplane, we're going to America. Wow, we were so happy, and you know, and so I have. But the bad weather start. We supposed to leave December fourth, uh, twelve o'clock at night. We supposed to leave with a little boat from that island to Shibenik, from Shibenik to. Uh, they call split, but pretty much Trogir is the city where's the airport. So they come to us and says we leaving ten o'clock because bad weather. Then p.m. Then they come five p.m. They say hey let's go now ten o'clock in the morning. We have to leave because they uh, it's a it's a sea. So it can be so bad weather. And I have two baggage one for me one for Janana what I have in the Red Cross clothes for us. That's only what I'm taking with no money. I don't even know how the dollar looks like. And they come and pick us up and the waves start coming. Oh my goodness. And that's a little, little boat, you know. And how waves come, they come to us. It's open. So when we come to Shivanik, finally we make it with God's help. And we go to bus station waiting for a bus, but we have a bus 10 o'clock at night and we like 10.30 in the morning in that bus station and the snow starting to fall. All clothes what we have, it's a vet. All clothes in the baggage is a vet. And we stay there all day, so hungry, so thirsty, no money, nothing. And Janan asking. And I have a friend, he's from city with my parents. And he say, I have some money, what do you want? And she buy uh, pretzels and some candy. Ooh, that's good because at least something, you know. And all day we stay there. Then we sit in a bus, only one hour drive from Shibani to Trogir, it's a snow falling, oh my goodness. Then we come to airport, it's 11 o'clock at night, and tomorrow morning, 6 a.m., we have 
uh, airplanes go to Rome, Italy. Mm -hmm. All night. So people lay down, whatever. We, it's so cold. It's wet. Everything is wet on us. Mm -hmm. And Janana lay down on me, and I have to sit, you know. I don't have, like I say, everybody with somebody, and I'm now with a with little girl, and I have to take care of her. So all night I can sleep. Then the the police over there working, they say, hey, do you want some coffee? Of course we do. Oh, give us the money, how much somebody have, you don't need creation money anymore, blah, blah, blah. Then people find some money, give it to them and they make us some coffee. And we finally sit in the airplane. So, and we asking, is it, can we smoke? Yeah, so everybody's smoking. Everybody, only kids now. <laughs> Little kids, this kid, like Jordan, yes. And so very quick we got to Rome, Italy, and we have it's like seven, not even 7 a.m., but 11.30, uh, I remember that. We have a flight from Rome to New York. And I was so tired already because the second day I don't sleep. And uh, I smell the coffee and I am hungry. And, but I don't even think about food. I think about the coffee. I tell I told you that story the other night that the first time in my life I come to situation I'm thinking but I didn't to go to ask somebody can you please buy me a couple coffee <laughs> but like I start crying I cannot do that and I didn't so we got in a in an airplane and so that's good, we have a coffee, we had food, whatever, you know, in airplane, and we asking, can we smoke? They say four last uh, row, you know, seats can smoke, and everybody go, 168 people. <laughs> and the, the people sit, and who don't sit, we stand and smoke, and the fire attendant, oh no, sit down, sit down, then, then they looking for translator, please tell them, of course, they find me, right? And please tell them to sit down, like, take a turns. <laughs> oh, yeah, who wanna, when I sit, I don't want to go back again. And Janana wants to go with me, of course, you know, and she cannot use the seat because somebody must sit. I have here and cigarette and, you know. So, but we have that time, first time American coffee. <laughs> And one pass a little like, Ooh, what is this? <laughs> like somebody like uh, take a shower in the water and just the dirty water. <laughs> and she called the fly attending. Mm, mm. She's like, yes, ma'am. Mm, no, 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 no. Mm, mm, mm. And she understands somehow. Bring her another one. Ah, she bring me same one. <laughs> Yeah, then we got to New York and in New York, but every uh, time we change the flight, we have a bag IOM. And they know we are refugee and somebody gonna waiting for us and take us where we need to go. So when we come to New York, we're going to split 168 people going to different states. Then I don't know how many going, not many, maybe 10 going to St. Louis, include me and Janana. But she wants to go to restroom and I take her to restroom and she got asthma attack. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know how I handle that. I'm like, hurry, we have to go. And she couldn't breathe. I'm like, drink some water, whatever. God help us. And, you know, we got in air, airplane. But they told me, in uh, Saint, when you come to St. Louis, you and your daughter, because we have somebody meet us who speak Bosnian, two of you going to Dallas, Texas. Nobody going with, nobody's going to be waiting for you in St. Louis. You have to find a uh, flight by your own. And that's the second night, third night I don't sleep. But... Uh, I have Janana and she fell asleep. I have take her. I have two bags. I have our coats. It's so cold and 
And uh, when we went to St. Louis, I'm like thinking, oh my goodness, oh gosh, it's a big airport, what are they going to do? And I see somebody working, and I'm like, hey, excuse me, excuse me, please, please, I need the help. No speak English, help, please, help. And I give them my um, tickets. But that time when I sit in the airplane, I see something, Fort Worth, Texas, where they live. Phone number, and I asked him next to me, person, where are you going, San Luis? That's mean I'm going to Fort for Texas. I'm supposed to go to Phoenix, Arizona. Who are you gonna ask? Mm. I'm like I will ask fire attendant. Oh, why? You know? Oh gosh, I'm uh, whatever. I am in America. I will go very quick to Arizona find myself. No big deal. I'm going. You know, mm -hmm. because they told me they know he's in Phoenix, and so, and I find someone, someone in St. Louis, and she put me in a car, the little car in the airport. They take me in, Janana got fun, mm -hmm. and take us to the airplane. And I just remember in that airplane, it was like a half empty. Mm -hmm. And I tell Janana, I will lay down here. If you want to sleep, sleep. If you don't want to sleep, I don't care what you're going to do. It's a third night, I don't sleep. I just fell. Pass out. Pass out. I don't even know where I am. I know the next thing, the flight attendant, she is trying to wake me up. When I wake up, nobody in the airplane. Engine on sleep. She's five years old. I mean, she's a big girl. And I have 90 pounds, so. And I take Janana, take the bags, take the jackets and taking, and I come outside and I don't see nobody waiting for me. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Hmm. What are they gonna do now? And I see the police. I'm like, I'm going to police. You know, that's the best thing to do. And I'm almost there, then the guy come, hey, Baisa, there's a nana, the nana, the nana. I'm Kelly from Ward Live. And the first thing what I learned about America, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm late. <laughs> oh, I even if I see my mom or my father, I won't be happy like I saw that guy. He came to pick me up. And uh, he said he take me to, he's from Ward Live. He's taking me to the place where I'm going to live. And, so he take me to the Bosnian family. I stayed with them seven days at the time because that time they take us to West Creek Fort Worth apartments. But the property manager, she don't let them to have apartment before we came and we can sign the lease. And it was December 5th, 1995, at Christmas time. Oh, everything is beautiful lights. And I'm like, oh, I am a lucky. And I was so happy, you know, like, I'm here. But in the morning, I got upset because it's not that nice how the looks at night with the lights. Mm. You know, it's a, it's apartment, but uh, they give to me only one mattress and with no sheets, no pillows, no blankets, nothing. That's the only what I take to my new apartment and but I'm happy I'm in life and my kids and I starting asking uh, the board relief how I gonna find Phoenix Arizona I have a son how that happened oh no for my two first year I was calling and calling lawyers and everybody I don't even know how much money I spent on the phone that time calling the uh, Phoenix uh, to find uh, how I can translate, how I can have my right visitation for my son and nobody cannot give me answer and uh, I find a lawyer here asking him and he say, you know what, how much money you need for that you can buy a big house. Oh, you're welcome to United States of America. That's mean I have to do that on my own. And I don't even hold your 
here and I have a car and I sit in a car, put Janan in a car and I went to Phoenix, my first trip. And I buy the big uh, map, map uh, for the road. I still have when we road travel, map. road map. And when we travel, I always have my map. I don't care about <laughs> GPS, anything. I want my map. <laughs> And I find him, but his father don't let me to see. And I went to the police office, and uh, they say, if he call on you, you're in trouble. And I don't want to go to jail or be in trouble. You know, like mm -hmm. in America, you. I, and I go in the school, and I saw him in the school and stuff. But somebody told me, like, you know, explain here what can happen with me. And I try one more time i didn't see him then janana was 14 and we went over there and he started working in the grocery store and i tell janana because i have a people in arizona too and you know they tell me about everything about him i went over there and i told janana he was two years old no is she 14 he was four yeah I think, or maybe she's 13, 14. I know he was a little, he was 17. And I tell Janana, please help me. You need to understand me when I see him. It's not going to be easy. She said, okay. Then I come to the uh, parking and I saw him. He pushed the carts. Mm -hmm. And I parking and I tell Janan, wait, wait, I need to smoke cigarettes. I, I need to come down, you know. And we sit, how we sit in the bench, I see Janana's father coming mm -hmm. with the little girl he's married and have a girl his age. And my Janana, he, she's like, what? I say, he's the father. Because I don't want him to see me. He don't gonna let me see him because he's 17. I can see him. And she's like, where, where? She don't know him. And I, but the, when we came here, I find the phone number. We call him, Janana called him, and he say, Elmer is sleep, you have to sleep too. And he changed the phone number. I ever, never can find that number. Um, after my son told me that's about his wife, she don't let him to have a deal with us. And I tell Janana, and she go after him. I say, no, Janana, please do not go. Wait, you know. She's like, Mom, don't worry. She have a phone, I have a phone, but I keep Janana like to distance in the store to see him. And she saw him and she's like, Excuse me. He's like, Yeah. And she starts speaking Bosnian. and are you Enver Heldich? He's like, Yeah, I am. Who are you? She's like, Nice to meet you. I'm Janana Heldich, your daughter, what you don't wanna know about her. I mean, she she was a big girl, 14 years old. He's like, where you come from? And she's like, oh, you don't want to come see me. I come to see you and my brother. And he's like, where's your mother? And she called me bad name. And I'm proud of Janana mm -hmm. because she understand what I go through. Mm -hmm. But also I'm sorry because she never have a good relationship with father. Mm -hmm. She never saw him after that. They stand that store called cones like a like a crog or something, mm -hmm. and they have a uh, apples and orange people, and he come back the name and she got that apples and start hitting on him, mm -hmm. and yelling, shame on you, you never come to see me, and you're telling my mother is bad and stuff, and he ran. Then Elmer was in a, you know the cashier. And he sees something, who is the girl hitting the apples to the father. And he come, and she come to him and say, hey, I'm your sister. Then I run there. Mm -hmm. He's like, no, I don't have a sister. You know, she's like, yes. And people start coming. And I come to Janana to, you know, come down and say, hey, Elmin, listen, I'm your mother. That's your sister. I don't have a mother. I don't have a sister. Then we, and that time, and somebody asked me, that's your child? How I run to the Janana, I just run and he started crying. I, I lost him. I, you know. Uh, then the girl, she's from Bosnia. She's like, "Where are you from?" And she asked me in Bosnia, and I'm like, "I don't know." She's like, "Hey, let's go to break room." And she buy us drink and, mm -hmm. you know, help us and stuff like that. 
and uh, so we went back to hotel and uh, Janana wants to go back I say tomorrow and I tell myself hey you have to bring these two kids back to Texas I was driving and Janana went and she started talk to him he is like eh. he wants to talk with her but not with me because he you know from he had a bad story about me from his father and stuff <coughs> And we don't have a good visit that time. Then my nephew find him, maybe Facebook or somewhere, and he say, "Why you?" Uh, it was like I don't know, five six years ago. Why you don't call your mother? Nice uh, she's looking for you. And he give him phone number. Then my nephew told me about that. Then I have a call and I see Arizona. And I'm like, Janana, here you go. I cannot take this phone uh, call. And she answered, and she talked to him. And when she gave it to me, it's so hard. He's like, apologize. That time, he don't even know, you know, he wants to see us. And, uh, you know, that story. But I say, hey, if you want us to come, we will come right now. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I will come to visit you and still he will come to visit us every time we talk. He don't let us come, but he say he will come, he don't come yet. Mm. So, like I say, I lost my son in the, because of war. If we, if it's not a war, we divorce. I mean, you know, I will see him, we, I have right visitation, but the war starts, he left here and here's the difference everything and you know that's the the very bad about <laughs> something worse would happen with me and I don't see Janana for three years and a half but these days I mean I can say I'm happy I'm here thanks God I'm here and thanks you know to America to bring us here mm -hmm. we have a good life yeah I know it was very hard. You said off the recording that that first year was harder than the war. Yes, it is. Can you tell me a yeah, little bit about sure. that? Yeah. When we came here, uh, the, my sponsor is Ward Relief. And like I say, what well, they give it to me, and after seven days they find an apartment, pay, pay for three months, but they never find us a job. And I have eight more people who's looking for a job. And they say, you have to, you know, also looking for a job. How? I'm the only one who knows some English. And uh, so, I don't know, somehow we hear the Alaska company hiring, and I call Ward Relief and I tell them, you know, and they, uh, from Ward Relief, I say, only what I'm asking, can you come and take us? Mm -hmm. We don't have transportation. And they take us over there and uh, so I was able that time to fill out application for seven people and eight myself. And I remember the supervisor says, how am I gonna, hiring these people, they don't know how to talk. And Beverly, the case worker says, Baisa knows some English and she learned very quickly. She's like, okay, and we have a job which is $5.15 per hour, uh, almost $400 my, because they don't have one bedroom apartments. They give me two bedroom apartments, which I don't need it. It's $400. Electricity, I don't have a phone uh, because I cannot afford food and everything, you know. Then the people from mosque come visit West Creek and to help us they are Muslim and they come to me and ask me for help to translate and they go each family and ask him what they need they take some people to store buy some clothes and buy you know like iron and vacuum cleaner and stuff and they come to me what do you need I say job Okay, everybody needs job, but, but I said, no, thank you. I don't need anything. If I have a job, job will buy me everything. 
That's what I need help. If you can help me with job, it's fine. If you cannot, I don't need iron or vacuum cleaner. And they left. They didn't help me. They come next time. And again to me. Are you sure you don't need any help? They take, they have like a storage with uh, the uh, used clothes and stuff like that. No, I don't need it. And uh, I, can you go with us to translate? Yeah, of course I can. And I go and they always come to me. Are you sure you don't need this? I don't need, I need a job. I don't have a car. I need a car. I need a job. That's what I need. They come one day, they say, we can help you with the car. Really? Yeah. But we start to work already. The two people from World Relief come to take us with two cars. And the one week. And second week, they say, you have to use the bus. I'm like, how are we going to use the bus? From West Creek to downtown, from downtown to somewhere. And how are we going to... It's 60 miles from the place. There's no way. Then <laughs> I come uh, in Alaska, we worked that night, and uh, I know people, uh, the Mexican people, uh, they helping each other like Bosnian, you know. And I come to them and I say, what is your address? <laughs> what is your address? <laughs> I try to ask. To find the people, is anybody live close to us, have a car, we can pay for gasoline? Then one, Maria, she is like a team leader or something. She's like, Paisa, why are you asking? She's the only one who speaks English. And I tell her, I say, tomorrow, tonight is going to be last night. We cannot work. We don't have transportation. She's like, you see that lady? Go ask her. She lives close to you. I'm like... Why can you ask? Oh. Now we don't talk. Okay. Her English and my English uh, work somehow. <laughs> she lives like maybe two mile away from us, and she's like, "Yeah." I say we will pay ten dollars per hour because Maria told me ten dollars a week. You have to pay for somebody. She's like, "Yeah, sure." I have tell the lady I have eight people. I say, but you know, I have eight, eight, no problem, no problemo, I have a big car. She have that, uh, um, what's the call, the big, like, a, similar to an, anyway. Like Station a, wagon? Like a van? Yeah, but yeah. like a church use, the big man. Oh, okay. Oh, that's good. <laughs> she take us, I don't know, for two months or so. We pay her $80 for her. It's fine. Good for us. We are so happy. That's over $300 a month. Yeah. Then one day that people come and say, Baisa, we can help you with the car. How oh, you can help me with the car? We can take you to dealer. We give down payment for you. And you can pay weekly. Hmm, I'm so happy. I have driver's license already, I guess. Yeah, I did. And so we went over there and I tried to pick pick the car. Oh, no, that one, no, that one. Which one? This one or this one? Then why you tell me to pick one? So like they give a 400 anyway, this, the some other big guy, the owner, they give like 400 down for me and I have to pay $50 every week. Okay, I buy Buick Skylar. So old, I mean, bad. It is my Escalade now is not worth it like that car. Bad shape, Dari. I bring the Invest Creek and everybody going to the um, um, car wash and be like 10 people cleaning that car. So, time to go. Yeah, I buy the car. And the lady tell me that night I work tonight no more. She's been temporary service. Mm -hmm. How am I going to put eight people in a car? And how I can tell you, you cannot go, you can go. Everybody needs a job. I'm like, okay, somehow we can fit. Thanks God no one is big. We have only one, the, you know, little big lady, but not big. <laughs> and I take eight people to work. But like I say, I pay $50. 
Then I paid for Janana for food and everything. So, and I, I smoked a lot in these days. And I go around uh, apartments and look for cigarette butts. I find them and I smoke. So, and I find one day, I'm like, I'm going to find another job. And I drive around and all the toy, seven people with me. And I come to everyone's place and we come to one um, place and I ask him, uh, we need the job. She's like, we don't hiring right now. Do you know who? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, people next door, they hiring all the time, go over there. And I go over there and the lady is on the front desk and I tell her, we need the job. She's like, Oh, yeah, be hiring and where are you from? Where is your accent from? I'm like from Bosnia and she called everybody. Hey, Bob, hey, whatever names. Come see the Bosnian people. They white. They white. Yeah, I guess we are white. I don't know. <laughs> they give us a job, $4.75 per hour or less. But we can work overtime. In Lasko, we cannot work overtime. And I remember I work 15 hours a day. With no lunch, I don't have a lunch to take. I have ten dollars left of my paycheck when I pay everything. Five dollars I put gasoline in my car. Five dollars is for food, and I have Janana. I buy a bag uh, candy for Janana. I buy one uh, bag potatoes, and uh, dollar ten, dollar nineteen cents, dollar six cents for the chicken legs and qu chicken quarters, the five piece. And I bake every day that, and the, the leg for Janana, Thai for me, and few potatoes. And uh, that's how we live. And so she's supposed to start to school. And I remember I was crying all night. I don't have a money mm -hmm. to buy her school supplies. And that Beverly come one day and she's thirsty. She got to my fridge and she's like, buy some. I'm like, what? You don't have any food. Oh, yeah, I don't have a time to go to buy. She's like, don't lie to me. You know, and she go buy me food. I was crying forever because I have Janana. I cannot work more job, And I don't know where to go to work. So I take one guy to apply for job. He was an engineer and uh, so hard for find job for him. Mm -hmm. He never do something else. And I see KFC hiring delivery drivers twelve dollars per hour. Oh, twelve dollars? Let's go ask what's that for. And they explain to me. And I and the manager say I will give him a job if you start work with him. Why me? How are I going to communicate with him? I say, okay. And so we have a meal. You can have a free meal a day. And at the end of the night, left chicken, you can take how much. I'm like, oh, gosh. Mm -hmm. That's the best job I ever have. Mm -hmm. I have enough food. Mm -hmm. And bring to Janana and, and stuff like that. But when my brother came, I sent the uh, uh, sponsors to be a sponsor for my brother and his family. Uh, he came from Zenta. It wasn't a war, but a mixed marriage. That time they can come easily to America, and they came and they stayed with me eight months. So they take care of Janana, and I start to work two jobs, three jobs, four jobs, and after that, here I am now. <laughs> and we're here. You just moved into your new house. Yes. Very beautiful. Yeah. Very beautiful Thank, you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Well. <laughs> What, what strikes me as you tell your story is you're always taking care of other people. Yeah, she, <laughs> even today. I have, I bring time to time people from Bosnia. They stayed, I keep them, they stayed with me six months. I give them food and everything, but they need buy the gifts and they work for me and I pay them and, you know, help them that way, family or friends. And that's another says, you know what, Baisa? The God sent you to make money and help the people. Mm. <laughs> Believe me or not, I help a lot people here, still in Bosnia and Americans, and in, in Bosnia. 
And every time I sent the money to Bosnia, I went to Kroger with Western Union and sent the money. And my family, my neighbors, I know who needs, who is very poor. And sometimes I sit and eat and I think about some people. And I'm like, Misha, you know, what do you think? And he's like, okay, I know, you will do it anyway. Mm. <laughs> From the Kroger, sometimes I don't left on the parking lot, on the way to the house, whatever. I have a call, I have new customers. I have, I'm an NGS list and, you know, how that works in another jobs uh, providers. I have all the time new customers. I mean, I don't mean I have somebody give me money. No, I work hard for my money. I work all my life very hard. But I don't know. The, I have, if I have enough jobs, you know, I can help. So now I have... <laughs> Around the, the Christmas time and New Year and stuff, and I'm sending money, sending the messages like, do not send anymore. I, why? I cannot handle any more jobs, you know. Like, I come now, I mean, I'm doing so good with my company, and I have a lot of customers and businesses so good, and, you know, and uh, it's hard to handle how much job, because uh, we back from Bosnia when? Uh, August 5th. August 5th? I don't have yet day off, mm. you know, even weekends I always work and, uh, but that's what makes me happy. If I help somebody, I'm so happy, mm. so, you know. Yeah, we have like, even here, the family from the Bosnian, like they came even before probably me or whatever. She always helped them. They came to, oh, we are going to have coffee, and then she go in the fridge, put in the bags, meat, blah, 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 this, go take home. You know, what you're going to do if somebody come to your house and open your fridge for some reason, want to drink, I say, okay, help yourself. You say, oh, you have a full fridge, mine is empty. What you going to do? Give them money? or food or something, and I'm that kind of person. And well, part of that is you know what it's like to have an empty fridge. Hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. I remember yeah. I have a days and days with no food in my life. Yeah. You know, then, like I say, I would love to write a book about my life before war and after war in these days, and because I was up and down, up and down, you know, many times. And these days I have enough, I have enough food and I have nice life and everything, but I never forget the days we don't have anything, yeah. you know, especially in the war and that refugee camp and my first year here. And so when I see the people they don't have, I understand. Mm -hmm. Some people forget. Because we have a many, many Bosnians, many, many, many Bosnians, no, and they forget. No, and include myself, we now uh, can thanks to Serbs we are here, believe me or not. Every year I go to Bosnia, every year is worse. In our economy, our government, and everything, it's like people just going, the young people just try to leave. They don't ask him where they going, what they gonna do, what they gonna work. Just go from Bosnia somewhere. Because you can work for a year, for two, for three, it, uh, never pay day. Tomorrow, tomorrow will never end. And now we have also problem with Syrian refugees coming. Yeah, yeah and yeah, so, new and, and, new problems. like I say, you know, Thanks, thanks God. Thanks to Bill Clinton. Yes, thanks to. If you spoke ever with any Bosnians and if you ask them which the uh, the favorite president, it's Bill Clinton. It's Bill Clinton. Mm -hmm. yeah. He is a president because that he time he come visit us, anymore. and he stopped a war and he gave us a very you know opportunity to come. We come as a refugee with the legal. Uh, I am American citizen for. I don't know, 15 years already, and my son was born here, He, I mean, he's American citizen, and my husband in Jenana, she never had to go past the test because she was under age, mm -hmm. and, you know, my grandsons, so I, 
uh, when I came here, I say I'm going five years and I'm going back to Bosnia. Don't understand me wrong, but I miss my country so much. I miss my culture. I miss everything. But like I say, thanks God I'm here. Uh, 2000, when he was born, I went to Bosnia. I buy the land in Sarajevo capital. And I build a house, three stories. But the first story is going to be like a, a, for business. That's how we're doing in a house. like. And I always want to go back. One year, <laughs> I take Janan and Jordan, and I say, I'm not coming back. I buy the ticket to one way. I stayed only three weeks. After three weeks, I went to Denmark, visit my sister, and come back here. I never say that. I'm not coming back. Then, when Janana have Allen, then I'm on, then Jaden, then. Oh, but yeah. uh, I definitely decide I will never go back to live in Boston. Because the, the number one, I come here for my kids to have a better life. Mm -hmm. She have a good life. And so if my kids, they will never live in Bosnia. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I mean, never say never, but. And if I am in Bosnia, when I go to retirement, and so what I gonna do over there, my kids is my life, mm -hmm. my grandkids now. And I don't think so, I will go back. So, and I have two apartments also over there, which is going, one for Janan and one for Allen. Jordan is already his house. It's not my house anymore, everything on his name. Mm -hmm. They can sell, they can buy here, they can go back, they can leave, they can do whatever they want. I'm here, I'm not going back. Mm -hmm. I decided already like maybe five, six years ago, even if they, kick me out, but I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't see that happening. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, um, uh, Nate Roberts and Melissa Sloan are also with us as part of the project team, and I usually give them a chance to ask some questions sure. if they have some questions that they want to ask. Nate, did you have something? I do. Uh, so, you know the purpose of the project. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering if, uh, what, what do you want people who watch this to take from your story? the students who are going to watch this video and hear about your life and your time in Bosnia and your immigration to America, what do you want them to know? Well, the, I want them to know uh, to wish to nobody ever be in a war and to like if they the especially students is ever come time to they can stop the war to stop war there's something worse what can happen with the people because you hear me my english so broken but believe me or not and i think i know my language yeah i do but when i go back every year to bosnia because i came 1995 and now 2015 Trust me, I got lost about the language. So we are not good. I mean, I cannot say not good, but we are like nowhere perfect. Mm -hmm. I don't know English perfect. I don't know Bosnian perfect anymore. So like I say, I mean, the, the war is something worse what can happen with somebody. Doesn't matter. Like I say, I have a good life here, uh, thanks to America, and we have very good life. Everything, but I miss my country. I miss my neighbors. I miss my culture. I miss my family. I miss everything. I miss war. You know. You know what I mean. So yeah. Well, is there anything else that we should have asked you about that you wanted to share that I didn't ask you about? I Maybe after you leave, I remember. <laughs> well, it's that, hard to, you, you know. know. Yeah, it's 
like yeah, yeah it's a hard like i say right now, maybe we try to stuff. don't talk about war sure. we try to forget and uh we don't talk sometimes like me and my husband something come to memory because something remind you something about mm -hmm. But we don't talk much. Even Jordan asks me sometimes questions, and I'm like, I buy the book. Here you go, read the book. <laughs> so you, you say you uh, you don't like to talk about the war. Yeah. Um, so why did you want to do this then? Well, I... Uh, the, the number one, when you told me this about, about students and about uh, history, and... I know someone have to share the story to make history. If nobody uh, share that, how you make history? You know. That's so. Yeah. Well, that's what you're doing here today. Yeah. So, yeah. So thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> it was painless, right?